it's, it's a night and day difference as far as cravings go, desires, hunger between eating the foods that actually support you metabolically, eating enough of them, whether it's eating enough carbs or just eating enough food and calories as a whole. I mean, we both experienced it uh, just through our, our low calorie days to our low carb days, all of that, the insane amount of hunger and cravings and restriction and food yeah. obsession where, yeah, we would go on basically binges because- We were binging, yeah. Um, we were, I mean, yeah. the whole carb cycling thing now is, and like the carb backloading and all these other like random bodybuilding techniques are essentially binging and, and fat, they're like binging periods. They're planned yeah. binging periods. And essentially we were sort of following those protocols because we were just so hungry for carbs for, because we were like, we were limiting them or like restricting them or controlling them and things like that. And there was a reason that we wanted them. Yeah. So increasing your carb intake, the, so many people think that they're addicted to sugar or addicted to carbs because when they eat them, <laughs> because when they eat them, they want more. And in reality, that's true until you get to the point where you've actually, where your body actually has enough fuel and then you don't have that anymore. And an important point here is that when you're giving your body what it needs, you don't have those same insane cravings or addiction type responses. And instead you, and you don't have to have that same obsession with food. You don't have to go through every single day feeling like you're waiting for the next meal or all that you want is carbs in any source and anytime you see anything that has carbs or it's just a calor calorically dense food like, <laughs> that you can't control yourself <laughs> yeah yeah it's like the 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 typical idea of like having uh cupcakes or cookies or donuts like out at a table and the whole time they're there you're just resisting and thinking about how badly you want them like that doesn't have yeah. to be there well i mean i find it funny now too because well like when you and i would go out people would have garbage food garbage food you know processed food cu cookies cupcakes things like that filled with vegetable oil, whatever else out there. And we wouldn't have a problem being that nah, we're not interested because we had just eaten a meal before that consisted of about a hundred grams of carbs, probably 30 grams of fat and probably 30 to 40 grams of protein with, and salted to taste. And it was sugar and sugar and starch and saturated fat sources. So when we look at that, it's like, yeah, you know, I'm already satiated. Yeah. Like I don't have a craving for it. I don't have a desire for it. Like it's not really calling me at all because I've met those needs already. Like, the craving is there for a reason. Mm -hmm. And the problem people run into with the weight gain with the cravings is that you fulfill them with the wrong, wrong types of foods. As far as it goes, the modern paradigm tends to look at things as calories in, calories out only, and that it's all about the calories in and of themselves and not about the foods. And I guess the paradigm that we're sort of putting forward is it's not really about the calories in, calories out. It's more about the foods. It's more about what foods you're eating. And then the calories in, calories out can essentially adjust itself, you know? I mean, I was having a conversation with somebody the other day and they're saying, they're saying, I was describing the diet and they were saying, so basically you eat however much you want diet. And I was like, yeah, I don't really like, I eat as much as I want. Like I'm never at a point where I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm so hungry. Like, and I can't have any food left for the day. Like I don't yeah. have any food left for the day. Like I can't eat anymore. I've met my caloric limit. It's more like I've, eating as much as I want and I can't eat anymore. And this is like where my calories filled in because the food satiates me. There's yeah. not, there's not going to be a point where I'm going to overeat because I, I couldn't like, I, I don't want to overeat. It would be like forcing myself to overeat. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of the place where, where you're at when you start to figure out what foods work for you. And, and you don't have to like the, the whole idea of the calories and macros. The reason we put those out there is just as basic guidelines to help people sort of like, you know, find their way through the mud a little bit. You know, you're out there trudging through the mud. We want to give you some sort of goal post to start with it at least so that you can, you have some sort of direction. Um, it's not because those things are the be all to end all answer. It's just, those are quantifiable metrics that we can easily sort of talk about between each other. It doesn't come down to calories at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, we, well, and, and, and it's, it's, so foreign to us now, but we, we both have been there. lived that for years yeah. and years, just like most people do. Uh, and it's such a night and day difference. Just, it, it, it's hard to put into words, but, but we, we both have lived through that. So it's, it's, yeah, it, it's something, it, it's a very different experience. Um, I do want to stipulate a couple of things. One was just that in addition to it being in, kind of against the calorie in calorie out model, there a lot of the common nutrition recommendations do go beyond that. I mean, they talk about most of it is anti-carb right now. Um, I'm sure that'll fluctuate at some point because most of it's just based on marketing and whatever else. But 
the a lot of it is anti-carb and we we are acknowledging that there's a difference in the way that all of the different macronutrients are metabolized and all that we're just not anti-carb and pointing out that a lot of the issues with carbs are not the carbs themselves they're there are other components. Um, so you were talking about individuality and finding foods that work for you. And I did want to mention that, yes, there is a lot of indiv individuality based on physiological principles. So it's based on where your gut function is at, where your nutrient status is at, how well you're metabolizing these different foods. We're not saying that some people, it's really healthy to be on a keto diet and other people, a vegan diet is healthy and other people, it's a high carb diet. Like that's, oh, we're definitely not saying that. Yeah. There are, there, we both agree that there are univer universal principles that govern our physiology and are very directly influenced by the nutrition that we're getting. And the, the principles all apply the same way, but there's still individuality based on where your environment, how your environment is and how your internal, internal and external environment are. Yeah. So, there is variation in what might work for you at a particular time versus another time or var variation between you and another person, but it's not on a large level. This is kind of small scale, certain foods versus other types of foods, amounts of carbs in a meal, meal frequency, things like that. But we're not talking on, on the larger level where, oh yeah, you might do better on a vegan diet or, or a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet. Those are, we would say, just misinformation or, or problems that are being attributed to the wrong idea or wrong thing yeah basically the principles because the, because they are principles and they aren't and principles generally aren't specific like they're not very specific in application they have sort of a broad application across different paradigms there's a spectrum of possibilities that you can use within those using those principles using those variables there's different sort of applications of those principles within the spectrum but the general spectrum still is like within a particular sphere. It's mm -hmm. not going to be these these like ridiculous like these ridiculous polarities, you know? The spectrum doesn't allow for that. It's more like it's more everything's more towards the center around around certain points. At least from my perspective, our arguments are based on what reading the research, understanding the physiology on different levels, on understanding it from a digestive level, what's going on in the digestive system in comparison to humans and chimps and rats and mice from the studies that we're looking at and then looking at well what has worked for us what has actually worked and then also what did people do in the past like what is the historical data uh, on these types of things and then what is sort of like a there's an element of like looking at things from an evolutionary perspective as well not necessarily genetic but like looking at like a, a progression and things like that from our closest ancestors and, and things along those lines and then certain adaptations that we have in comparison to our closest ancestors, which all of these things are valuable in and of themselves. It's just in order to have a complete picture, I think you have to take all the variables into consideration. And that's essentially what we're trying to do here. And that's why we have sort of like we've narrowed things down into a particular perspective. And prior to modern civilization, a lot, a lot of this stuff was already known. A lot of this stuff was was known through trial and error and and people figuring things out and and basically passing it on to the next generation and, re and recording things and, and going from there. It's only that it's only when people start, when they started putting out guidelines, like the, the food pyramid and things like that, that we started losing these, these past historical ways of doing things. And we started getting these ridiculous dietary iterations where it's like, I'm only going to, I'm never going to eat animal products or I'm never going to eat plant products or I'm not going to have any carbs or I'm not going to have any fats. I mean, and, and the reason why those things are, we would say, incorrect is not because they swing from one end to the other. I mean, there's nothing inherently wrong with saying one type of food is, is not ideal for our physiology. Like we've talked about grains and seeds in that way. We've talked about yeah, polyunsaturated true. fats in that way a little bit. So we're not going off some principle of everything needs to be balanced and everything in moderation. And the issue is when you take one macronutrient or micronutrient and have too much of it. Um, well, it's based on physiological principles and in addition to things like experience, both our experiences and then the experiences of people we've worked with.